Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. My name is Leonette and I'm so glad that you are here with me today. This video is filled with the top $35 Dollar Tree DIY home decor you will absolutely fall in love with. Let's get started. All right, so for this DIY, I am going to take four of these chalkboard little planks that you can find at Dollar Tree, remove the back from them, and then we are going to join them together using hot glue, making a window, like a little four pane window. To make it a little bit more secure, I am going to hot glue some of these extra large crafting sticks to the back where all the panes join. And now I am going to give it three coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Band and the Linen White. I am now going to create a very simple but very spring-like beautiful wreath using this wreath form from Amazon. Now I know Dollar Tree carries them as well, the smaller kind. And I'm just going to take some of these flowers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to start placing them kind of like just very natural looking. I'm going to take some yellow ones and some uh, white ones and um, just start placing them towards the right side of the wreath a little bit fuller on the top than on the bottom i am then going to take some of this beautiful ribbon from the dollar tree and make a very simple bow and hot glue it to the center I am now going to hot glue the wreath right in the center of the window and then I'm going to add some jute twine to the back of the window so that I can hang it on the wall. And that's it for this one guys. I think this one is so beautiful. I love how bright and airy it is. I love that I didn't distress the window. I kept it pure white and it just looks so stunning. For this next DIY, I am going to take this box sign from the Dollar Tree, remove, of course, the plastic covering, and then I'm also going to remove the black border from the front. I'm going to sand down just a little bit the residual glue as well as any paper that kind of lifted up. Now I am going to place some wood stick glue onto the front and I am going to resurface it with crafting paper from Michaels. Now I'm just going to wrap it around to the sides. So I'm just going to make some slits and then start folding up and gluing the sides onto the box. Trust you when you said that beauty lives in me. 
I am now going to take this little jar. It almost looks like a chemistry kind of little jar. I found these at Michael's and they were on sale for a dollar and I just thought they were so cute. I'm gonna use one of them here. I'm just gonna mark and make holes right where I need to place some jute twine so that I can uh, tie it around the jar. Now I am going to hot glue the jar as well to make sure that it is safe and is not going to fall. I don't think the jute twine itself is going to be strong enough to hold it. So I'm going to hot glue it as well. And I'm just going to tie it in the front with a very simple bow. To finish it off, I'm going to add some of these beautiful flowers from the Dollar Tree and call it a day. This one is so cute, so simple, and yet so fresh looking. I think two of these will look beautiful as a set. For this next DIY, I am going to take this leftover canvas frame from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to stain it using Waverly Antiquing Wax. Once the stain was fully dry, I'm now going to do a heavy dry brush of Rustonium Chalk Paint in the Linen White. I am now going to take this metal flower from the Dollar Tree, remove the stem from it because I'm only going to need the flower portion of it. And then I am going to give it one good coat of bare paint in the Mossy Bench. This is by far one of my favorite colors and it's by Bear. It's called Mossy Bench and it is beautiful. I'm going to take some white paint from Rustoleum, the linen white, and I'm just going to trace the center of it so that it is um, nicely white there in the center. These green leaves are from the Dollar General. I'm just going to hot glue one going up, the other one going to the side on the bottom right corner of the frame and then I'm going to hot glue the flower right in that corner and that's it for this one guys. Another very simple one but so fresh looking and is so adorable. I love that the green and the mossy bench like that teal color just kind of kind of blend together in a very contrast way which is so weird but I just love the way the combination looks. For this next DIY, I am going to use this tin bucket from the Target dollar spot. I'm going to re remove the handle from it and then give the bottom portion of it, except for maybe one inch on the top, two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white.
I am now going to take this fabric that I get at Walmart. They come in little bundles and I'm just going to cut a piece of it. I'm going to make a liner for the inside of the tin bucket. Now I did the same thing on my last project that I created a liner for and I made it too short so I did have to patch it up in the end. But what I'm doing here is I'm creating a seam. So I'm just going to hot glue and fold about a half inch down so that way it creates a nice seam. I'm going to place it inside and fold it outwards and then hot glue it in place so that it does not move on me. And like I said, I cut it way too short so I had to do a smaller one to patch it up in the back. Once I get this all set up, I'm just going to place some florals inside and that's it for this one. Another such an easy one, but truly beautiful way to use this teen buckets that we know we can find so many places like Dollar Tree as well. And imagine having several of these lined up together. I think that would look beautiful. Take a step into the river. Get down on your knees. Come to the mountain. We'll take it in the view. You will find the life is greater than you knew. When you go through the storm, I will hold you, keep you warm. When you stay in the night, I will share. Alright friends, for this next DIY, I am going to use this canvas frame sign from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. I am now going to take this round brush, it's like a waxing brush, and I'm just going to make stripes going down about maybe an inch and a half to two inches apart from each other. Now this gray is by Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint and it's their country gray. Heading back to what used to be home, passing by those little towns I know so well. Start I am now going to take this decal from the Dollar Tree. I've already used a portion of it, but I'm going to use another portion of it and place it right on the right side towards the bottom of the canvas and that's it. <laughs> Does it get any easier than this guys? Seriously, so easy and so cute. I love the way this one turned out. I love the gray, white, and black combination. And then that pink flower just topped it off. For this next DIY, I am going to take these three terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree and give them one coat of the bare mossy bench paint. I am now going to take this French script stencil that I purchased on Amazon quite a bit ago and I'm just going to start kind of stenciling it but almost dry brushing it. I just want this to be very faint and I'm going to stencil this very randomly in different areas of each pot. That way it looks like it's been there for a while and it's kind of faded through the years.
Now I'm going to take some jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around three times. Make a simple bow in the front. Just make sure that if you're going to recreate something like this, that you are tying the bow in the area where you really want that pot to shine. So just find the best area that is stenciled and then make the bow there. And I did the same thing on the other two pots. Once I was done with the third one, I just added some florals and that's it for this one, guys. Another beautiful, easy one and so cute. I just love that blue color. That teal color is just gorgeous. For this next DIY, I am going to take this little container from the Dollar Tree. It's in their party section and comes two in a pack. And I'm going to give it three coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. I'm now going to take a sponge applicator and some Waverly chalk paint in the ink and I am going to just start making V's kind of like the shape of a V all around the top rim and then one more line underneath that one. I've been thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter, nothing matters. So I cry instead When I was done doing the second row, I was done guys. Again, these are so easy guys. Anyone can make truly no skill required. It's just so beautiful. This little container looks like it came from a high-end store and I love it. All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to take this children puzzle from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove all the letters from it, flip it um, to its back, and give it two coats of Rustoleum chalk paint in the linen white. Using my Cricut, I cut four little bunnies and these will represent my cute little family here with daddy, mommy, my son, and my daughter. I just think they're so cute. <laughs> I love this vinyl too. This one is from Cricut. And I'm just going to place them towards the left bottom side of the sign. I also cut our last name in, um, in black and I am going to place it above the bunnies. I'm going to hot glue some cotton tails on each bunny and I'm going to, uh, for the kids, I'm just going to cut pieces of the cotton, a uh, little, they're not even cotton, they're like more like pom-poms and place them um, just a little smaller because they're smaller and um, trim it around as needed. To the right side of the design, I am going to place some florals. This greenery leaves are from Amazon. And then I'm going to place some white little flowers from Dollar Tree. Hot glue it in place. 
and then make a very simple jute twine bow and hot glue it to the stem of the florals. Because I am going to keep this sign for our family, I'm not going to give it away or sell it. I'm not going to cover the back portion where it has the colorful alphabet portion. But if I were to sell it or give it away, I would have, have covered the back side using some fabric. For this next DIY, I'm going to take two of these wooden arrows from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut off the little end corners here just so that it fits in my miter box. I'm going to cut them so that I have a rectangle. I'm going to sand down the edges just a little bit so that they are smooth and then I'm going to stain them using Rust-Oleum aged glaze this is in their like grayish tone and um, just let it dry it's really easy to use this glaze I really like that it doesn't have a strong scent and it's water um, based so it's easy to clean up off of your hands I'm going to now drill more holes on the boards I want this to have four holes now two of them were already on there but I wanted to make them bigger and then one of them almost broke so I just ended up drilling another hole in front of the original one Sand it down just to make sure again that it is smooth. And then I'm going to use some jute twine from Amazon. This is the black jute twine. And I'm just going to thread it through this ring that I got uh, oof, so long ago. It was from a curtain rings and I have them left over. I'm going to loop it through. So now I have four strands. And that way they're nicely long because I'm not sure how long I want these shelves to be. I'm going to thread them through the hole. Now for the first shelf, I tied both strings together. But then I ended up changing my mind and I switched it up to where I just tie it around the um, around each other. And I'm going to show you how I do it here in a minute. And that way it gives you two ways you can do it. You can knot it too so that it doesn't thread through the hole. However, the knots were a little bit too small and it was coming right through. And I didn't want to make a huge knot. So I thought about then again tying them together like this. But then you can see it from the front. So I was just trying to see which way would work best. And then I ended up just um, tying them around to each other. For this other one, instead of tying them together, I'm just going to tie it around to each one, just like that. And that way, it just didn't have that tie knot on the bottom that you can see. But I think these turned out super cute. It's great for little tiny flowers. The succulent from Dollar Tree is perfect on these. I really love the way they turned out. Almost looks like a farmhouse, like a modern farmhouse look. All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to use this Dollar Tree wooden flower and I am going to trace it on this craft paper that I got at Michael's. Then I am going to cut it to size and glue it using wood stick, not wood stick, glue stick. <laughs> Here I'm just making sure that nothing is um, lifted up, that everything is flat, and that any excess glue would um, be out. And then I'm going to use my X-Acto knife just to make sure that the outside details like the edges are nicely cut and trimmed. After that, we are going to add some tiny little legs just using these wood beads. 
This is going to be like a decor riser where you can place florals or a vase or whatever you'd like to use it for. But I think it turned out absolutely adorable. I love the gold tone of the um, craft paper. It's going to be another very, very simple one. I'm going to use one of these flat canvases from the Dollar Tree and then one of these leftover fence, garden fence that the Dollar Tree carries. I recently made a wreath um, with half of it. So this is the remaining part of it. And I know everyone is using these fences, but hey, I had this one left over, so why not? So I'm going to cut out just one of those rounded sides and just make sure that I cut off any excess fence that is on it and make it as smooth as possible. Then I'm just going to place some hot glue on the back and place it right on top of the canvas. I'm going to make a very simple floor arrangement. I'm going to take these two leaf picks from Amazon and I am going to just tie them and join them together using jute twine, hot glue it to the bottom, and then I'm going to take a leftover sunflower from the Dollar General, place it right on the center, and then I'm going to place some jute twine on the back to be able to hang it, and that's it. <laughs> it does not get easier than this, guys. Truly, so, so easy. Take a step into the river and get down on your knees. Come to the mountain, we'll take it in the view. You will find the life is greater than you knew. When you go through the storm, I will hold you, keep you warm. When you stay. This is going to be another simple, very easy DIY. I'm going to take these pages from a book from the Dollar Tree and I am going to just roll them and then I am going to tie some jute twine around and I'm going to make three of these. I am then going to take this greenery. This is uh, like a faux lavender and the, these um, leftover greenery. I don't know where it's from. I'm going to join them together again using some jute twine. And then I am going to take one of the Dollar Tree jars and I'm going to hot glue it, the arrangement at an angle. And then I'm going to wrap it with some more jute twine. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on. I put my feet up. And then once I'm done, I'm just going to place those rolled up book pages right inside and it turns into this beautiful little flower arrangement that I think looks so fresh and so cute. All right, for this next DIY, I am going to take this thrifted bamboo mat and one of these Dollar Tree vases, and I'm going to just wrap it with this um, mat. So I'm going to cut what I need and then hot glue it in about three or four places to secure it and then cut any excess mat from both the top and the bottom.
I am now going to take this Dollar Tree lace ribbon and I'm just going to tie it on in the middle and make a very simple bow. And that's it guys. I'm going to add a floral or a flower from the Target Dollar Spot. And that's it. Such a beautiful vase. So unique. And it has like a tropical feel to it, doesn't it? All right, guys, so now on to the unusual wreath. I am going to take this thrifted basket that I actually painted um, a while ago. Oh, my gosh. And then I'm going to take this coconut liner from the Dollar Tree. I pulled it apart from one of those, you know, like cocoa liners that the Dollar Tree sells in the spring. And I'm going to now kind of turn it and twist it to make it look like a little bird's nest. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of the basket. I am now going to take these branches from a Dollar General pick that I got. Um, I think it was at the end of their Christmas season. I don't know why they had them in the Christmas season, but I just think they look springy and green, so I'm going to use them. And I'm just going to start placing them uh, where I see fit. So I think it turned out being like maybe three on one side and two on the other. What I try to keep in mind when I'm creating wreaths is to make it look very natural. I like when things look like they've just been around in nature and it's just not perfect, but it just looks, I don't know, I guess just the best word to describe is very natural. So now I'm going to take these flowers from the Dollar Tree and I am going to just place them. Again, just start eyeing them out, placing them where I think it will look nice and very natural to the shape of the wreath as well as around the bird's nest. I am now going to take the welcome portion of this B sign from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the B as well as the rounded hanging portion of it. And then I'm gonna hot glue it to the front of the wreath. Now I'm going to take three of those wooden beads and I'm going to use them as little eggs. I'm going to try to hide the little hole where you can't see it. But don't they look super adorable? This is probably my favorite part of the whole wreath is these little tiny eggs inside this bird's nest. So stinking cute. To finish it off, I'm going to add some more of that Dollar Tree lace ribbon. I'm going to thread it through the handles 
to make sure that they're nicely secure in there. And then, ah, uh, that's it. <laughs> We're done with this one. I love this wreath. I wish I can keep it. I'm not going to keep it because I already have something for, for my wreath front door decor. And I'm going to sell this one. But gosh, I think it turned out so adorable, so cute. And what a great way to use this basket that I hadn't used in months. All right, we're going to start with the frame that unfortunately it was broken, but um, I did remove the back from it and I removed everything from it and I'm just going to keep the frame um, because we are going to make a little hexagon wall decor. I'm going to give the frame two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk band in the linen white and let it fully dry. I am then going to take some burlap ribbon and I am going to make a bow, just a simple bow. I like to loop it like one of those awareness ribbon, scrunch it in the middle and tie it. This is going to be a little bit on the bigger side, but I think it's just going to look really cool when it's dangling down on the bottom of the hexagon. So once I have it tight and um, secured in the center, then I'm just going to take some of that Ace bandage wrap. I found a way to use it. <laughs> I'm going to cut a small piece from it. Actually, it could have been smaller. And I'm just going to wrap it around the bottom. This is going to serve to give me something for that hot glue and bow to stick to, to stick on. But it actually worked out perfect because when I, I'm going to be putting in some of the greenery in here. And it was so easy to just slide it in there. And it held really well. So I don't know. I may have come up with some, some clever way to use this Ace bandage because it was really, really easy to just, like I said, slide some stems in there and you see it in a little bit. So once I had the Ace bandage secured on the frame, I'm just going to add some hot glue and attach the bow. So here's the greenery that Sarah sent me. I'm just going to cut a couple of these stems and I'm just going to, like I said, just slide them in right in between the frame and the ace bandage. And I think that worked out super, super well. And I did the same thing on the other side. Using a serrated, serrated knife, I am going to cut one of the lemons that Sarah sent me in half. And of course, be very careful if you're going to do this. At first, I thought I would use both halves. I ended up just using one. But um, nonetheless, we're going to um, do something here with both halves of the, um, of the lemon. I'm going to take some golden foil leaves in some Mod Podge and I am going to start applying it on the lemons. Now this is very tricky sometimes to use. It's not hard. It's just tricky. It's sticky and it flies everywhere but the end result is always beautiful. So you've never used it. This is only my second time using it. So I'm not the uh, most expert um, gold leafing person but um, I am using some gloves that way I don't get Mod Podge all over my my beautiful nails which I'll talk to you here in a little bit but um, yeah I'm just going to start placing some of the leaves all over the um, lemons and um, let them dry once the Mod Podge was dry I am going to hot glue again one of those halves right in the center of the bow. I think it looks super cute. I am going to use some of that faux leather ribbon and I am going to just trim the upper part of the hexagon. So you're going to see that I am going to do a total of two sides because the top side it's going to be like a loop that way I can hang it from there. So as you can see here, I just cut it enough where I had enough to cover two sides on each side, like you can see, and then I'm still going to have enough to loop on the top. I'm 
gonna take some of these yellow flowers that I recently got at Walmart and I am just going to again slide one little stem in each side right through that ace bandage and that way it just adds a little bit more of texture and that yellow tone that I think looks so beautiful. I did decide to add a couple of tiny little stems from a boxwood pick just on each side of the lemon just to add again a little bit more texture and color to that center bow and I think this turned out beautiful what a beautiful wall decor bright and airy perfect for summer this next DIY I am going to take one of these Dollar Tree wreath forms now it is not the perfect circle so because I couldn't get it to be into a circle I'm going to do a little trick here that I did very recently on another wreath form and that is to split it on the top so first we're going to tie um, two spots close to each other on the top because that way when I cut the wreath in half or just that top part it's not going to come apart on me so I'm going to use my shears here and a lot of these supplies that I use today I do have on my Amazon store. So check it out. I do have it down in the description box as well. So now that I have the wreath split on the top, I am going to wrap some nautical rope that I had left over from a, another project. I did have two pieces. So one of them I'm going to have kind of like sticking out long ways as you can see. And then the other part I'm going to to just wrap it around and secure it with hot glue. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to take some more of that burlap ribbon I'm going to make a simple bowl once again this one's going to be a little smaller and then um, again use some jute cord to tie it and secure it in the center and then I'm going to take that little pet bandana that Sarah sent me and I'm going to just wrap it kind of like what you see here just roll it around I'm going to take some of that um, yarn and use it to tie it I'm going to make this bandana into a small bow so again I'm going to use the same technique just loop it around like an awareness ribbon tie it in the center and then fluff fit as needed and then I'm just going to hot glue all the bows onto the wreath form. I'm going to take some more of that greenery that Sarah sent me. I'm going to cut two little picks and I'm going to place them right there behind the bowl on each side just using a little bit of hot glue. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to tie into a knot both ends of the wreath. And that's it. <laughs> this one turned out so cute. I love the colors. I actually do. I think it's like a very muted summer colors. And I love that bandana, how it actually looks really cool. I think I might do this again with maybe with different um, prints on different bandanas. But I love the way this turned out. why it's going to be very simple i'm going to take the bamboo cutting board and eight of these little blocks that you can get at the dollar tree they're like part of a like a brain gains i think it's called and i'm just going to hot glue two in each corner and we're going to make a little decor riser once i have the blocks all attached i am going to give everything two coats of rust-oleum chalk band in the linen white i'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete i'm dancing through Everything's about to come my way Nothing can ruin my date No matter what anyone does or say I smile at fools No, I don't care cause I am on my way Up and I won't stop I won't slow down Steady on my feet
Once the paint was dry, I am going to use some of those gold um, little robots that um, Sarah sent me. And I'm just going to start rubbing them on towards the left bottom, or not left, right bottom corner of the riser. And once I had it where I wanted it, which was just very delicate, very simple, that's it. I'm going to leave it just like this. You can also seal it if you'd like. I just left it like this, but for now, um, but maybe later on I'll seal it. But look how beautiful it looks. So simple, so chic, and I just, I love decor risers. I've been a little bit obsessed with them. For this next DIY, I am going to take half of the flower stickers that Sarah sent me and I am going to give them two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Man in the Linen White. I'm going to take one of these glass vases from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to start sticking them kind of at, at an angle going upwards and that's it. <laughs> This is probably one of the simplest, easiest DIYs ever. So basically, I just painted them. Now I am unsticking them and then sticking them. <laughs> now you can paint these flowers in any color you want. I decided to go with white because I love white. But I think it will look very pretty, almost in an ombre look. So if you start like dark or light and then work your way up to a darker color, oof, that would be beautiful. So anyway, it's just a very simple DIY and cute way to... Um, customized this little vase and how gorgeous is it i love 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 the way it turned out For this next DIY, I am going to take the galvanized arrow that Sarah sent me and a Dollar Tree. It's like a 4th of July sign. And I'm going to temporarily tape it here because what I'm going to do is I want to trace a larger arrow around the arrow. So we're going to make this arrow look a little bit bigger than what it is. So I'm just going to use my square here and just trace about half an inch outside of the arrow. Then I'm going to take my blade knife and I'm just going to score on the lines and tear. So basically it's scoring and tearing until you have the arrow. <laughs> I do this all the time. I love using Dollar Tree signs for this because they're so customizable. And all you got to do is just be careful, of course. But if you score and carefully tear apart, it's so easy to do. Once I had the arrow all done, I'm just going to sand the edges to make sure they are smooth. And this worked really, really well. So when you're scoring and tearing, don't worry about being perfect because once you sand it, it does smooth out. Then I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Man in the Linen White. Mm -hmm. 
while the paint dries, I'm going to start to distress a little bit of the arrow. I'm just going to add some antiquing wax by Waverly and a chippy brush. And I'm just going to start making it look like it's a little rusted. So basically, I'm just going to dab the antiquing wax all around the edges. And then I'm going to use a um, old rag, which is basically an old sock. And I'm going to start dabbing any excess. That way I don't have like globs of antiquing wax. So you see there, just dabbing. And I'm going to do this until I like what I see. Then I'm going to attach the arrow, the galvanized arrow, hot gluing it to the white arrow. And I'm going to uh, do that. And then I'm going to start antiquing and adding a little bit of that um, same technique onto the white arrow. Now I'm going to take some of that ribbon that Sarah sent me and I'm going to start lining all around the arrow using hot glue. Now I'm not going to cut. I'm just going to fold and kink and continue the, the uh, kind of like tracing or bordering. I'm going to border the, um, the arrow and I'm just going to do it without cutting. As I said, I'm just going to fold and continue to hot glue all around the trim of the arrow. I'm going to add some greenery grass here that I get on Amazon. It comes like in a little bush, like a pick, and I just uh, cut two small picks from it. And I'm going to add some more of those yellow flowers that I used earlier from Walmart and just hot glue them, kind of facing where the arrow is facing. So then I'm going to take some of this thicker jute twine, and I'm just going to make a multiple loop bow, um, secure it in the middle with some smaller jute cord, and then hot glue it underneath so at the end of the uh, little flower arrangement and then i'm just going to use some same some of that same ribbon make a loop in the back and that's where we can hang it from and that's it guys Look how stinking cute this looks i love the rusticness of it and i love that, that the arrow now looks larger this is an, a lot larger arrow and i love the way it turned out get started for this DIY I am going to start with one of those oversized large painting stirring sticks and I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white I am then going to do the same thing to these three little like palette wooden tiny palettes from Dollar Tree they're so cute but for the palettes I'm going to give it a little bit more of a dry brush so they can have a little bit more of a contrast from the stick on the back I am then going to take these letters. They're like felt letters and they have sticky on the back. And I'm just going to place uh, the phrase love grows here. And I am going to do it uh, 
obviously on the bottom part of the little palette. And then I am going to hot glue each little palette to the stick starting at the bottom and then leaving maybe about four inches in between each. But I will leave about two and a half inches on the top so that I can drill a hole, thread some jute twine and be able to hang it. I am now going to take some florals from the Dollar Tree. They're all going to be in the purple tone just to kind of keep it in that purple um, family. But they're all going to be different. And I'm going to start with the larger ones on the bottom and then medium ones on the middle and then smaller ones on the top. And then after that, we'll be done. This one was super easy. But what a cute little arrangement you can use either on a porch or in a home or even on a like a back deck or something. I just think it looks super cute. All right, for this next DIY, we are going to take this Dollar Tree mat. It's like a placemat. And I am going to take more of those larger paint stirring sticks. And I'm just going to start measuring the smaller sides. Then I went on my miter saw and I cut them to size. Now that I have those, I'm going to take two more of those sticks. And I am going to measure where I need to cut the ones that are going horizontally. Then I am going to stain them using Rust-Oleum Chalked Glaze and this is in the gray tone. Once I have them stained and dry, I am going to secure them using hot glue and staples. You can certainly use just hot glue, but I think adding the staples just add a lot more st uh, stability. And um, so I did that on the first one. And then after I had that one on the side, I added the two horizontal ones and then the other one on the other side. For more stability, I decided to add some staples on every seam. That just adds a little bit more of a rustic look, but also, again, stability so it's not flimsy on me because the mat is not very sturdy, obviously. And then, of course, I added some more staples all over the um, back of the frame. And then I am going to add some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, knot it, and staple it to the top. And that's it for this one. Such an easy DIY. If you do not have a miter saw, you can certainly use your miter box. It works just as well um, cutting these um, sticks. And um, what a beautiful and what a great size sign for any decor in your home.
for this next DIY, I am going to take more placemats and I am going to cut. It's probably about two inches to or maybe an inch and a half to two inch strips. And I'm going to use this gray and white one as well as this blue one. They're both beautiful. And then I'm going to cut them for about eight inches. Then I'm going to round up the bottom corners just so that they're not pointy. We're going to make some bookmarks here with these. Once I have them or rounded up on the bottom, I am going to make uh, these little tassels using yarn. This yarn is also from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take something. It doesn't matter what you take. This is a piece of scrap board or a piece of paper from something and then i am going to you know how to make tassels i don't need to tell you but for those who are not used to making them basically you just then take some more of that yarn or whatever string you're using tie it on the top make a very very strong tie or not and then you're going to take more string or more yarn and then just tie it around the top just leaving about half an inch on the top And then you cut the excess of what you don't want. So you can make it as short or as long as you want. I did the same thing using this gray yarn again from the Dollar Tree. I am now going to take the crocodile and punch hole two holes or one hole in each uh, bookmark and then I can thread through the little tassels, tie them and that's it guys. Now tell me this is not like the easiest DIY ever. I really love the way this turned out so easy and what a cute little gift, you know, even if it's not these placemats, but even if it's anything else, you can make these tassels look so cute with them and the bookmarks I think would make a really cute gift for anybody. For this next DIY, I am going to take more of that blue placemat and I am going to cut the sides of it. So I'm going to leave the little middle portion for another DIY in the future. Now I'm going to take them and I'm just going to roll them up and secure them with hot glue. I am then going to take some white yarn. This one is actually from Michaels and I'm just going to tie it around, make a simple knot. These are just gonna be like some little vases. Now I decided, I contemplated giving them a bottom but it really wasn't needed so I just decided just to keep it simple. But if you wanna add a little you know, bottom, you can use foam board, you can use more of the placemat but it was just not needed so I did not add it. And then I'm just gonna add some flowers from the Dollar Tree and that's it. What a cute little way of adding color to any decor and just make these little tiny, uh, well, one is not that small, but these little vases, I think they turn out super cute.
for this next DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree welcome Easter sign. I'm going to remove the um, just the lining portion of it, the one that has the decor. And then we're going to make some coasters. <laughs> I rarely make coasters. Actually, only ones that I remember. And I'm so excited. So then I took my ruler here or my square. And I'm just going to mark three and a half inches. And I am going to cut using my knife blade. Basically, you just want to kind of just score it, I guess, several times, and then it just snaps. And then once you do that, you can sand it down using a paper or sandpaper or a sanding block, and it'll smooth out the edges. That way, they're as straight and smooth as possible. And then after that, I did measure three and a half inches going the other way. That way, I have a nice, uh, as close as possible to a perfect square. Once I had four of them made, I am going to take some E6000 and some hot glue and I am going to place them on that gray and white placemat we had left over from the bookmarks. Now you can make six, you can make eight, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to make four because here at home we have four of us, but you can certainly make as many as you want. Once I had them glued to the placemat, I'm just going to use my rotary cutter here and cut them as close as possible to the edge so that I don't have to, so that they're nicely clean and, you know, um, uh, straight, I guess. And then I'm going to take the sanding block once again, and then I am going to sand down the edges and the little corners. That way it's nicely smooth and not pointy. To finish it off, I'm going to take some of these felt little pads. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut them in half. I'm gonna take the smaller ones and cut them in half. Then I'm gonna place them on the bottom, making sure that they're all facing kind of like the same way so it looks finished and professional. And that's it. That way it's not gonna scratch. It's, I don't think it would have scratched because it's it's kind of like a, a really hard cardboard, but I don't. it wasn't going to scratch the surface, but just to make them look a little bit more professional and finished. And I think they look so adorable. You can make these with anything, but with placements, they already are a material that water can be on them. And I think they turn out so, so cute. All right, this Dollar Tree heart is beautiful as is, but it's not the style that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to actually turn any decor from the Dollar Tree into beautiful decor that you that matches your style. So I'm gonna start by removing the galvanized love. I'm doing it very carefully because this is very thin metal and it will bend. So if you've worked with this, you know what I'm talking about. So I removed it, I was very successful, surprisingly. Now I'm just gonna remove all this leftover little pieces of paper and just remove any sheen from the heart. I like using my palm sander, it just makes things so easy, so quick, but you can certainly do this with a hand sander, like a sanding paper. I'm gonna 
dust it really well make sure it has no remaining dust and now i'm going to give it two coats over stolium chalk paint in the linen white but the this part that i'm painting here is going to be my back part i'm just not going to um use it but i do want it to have it look clean and pretty this is going to be my front side so this side is going to have the two coats and i'm going to do coats in different directions so that i get a nice texture to it I'm going to let it fully dry and then I'm going to sand down the edges just to give it a little bit more of a distressed look. It already had a little bit of a distressed look, but I just wanted to give it a little bit smoother look. I'm going to take my square here and I'm going to start making some lines. We're going to plank this heart using a permanent marker and I'm going to tilt it just at an angle like you see there. And I'm going to use the width of the ruler to actually be the size of my planks. This is so easy. You can make plans in any direction, sideways, vertical, and an angle whatever you want and i love the look so now we're going to take that love i did spray it with some um, black matte spray paint now i'm going to spray it with this top coat to ensure that it's not going to scratch off before i apply the love i'm going to use one of these ribbons i get these little bundles at hobby lobby you can get them at different places actually and i'm going to take this one that's kind of wavy and thread it through the hole and then make a knot in the back All right, now we are going to start adding some hot glue to the galvanized love and we're just going to apply it in the center i'm going to give it just a little bit of a tilt i think that's going to look super cute and that's it so easy but we are going to apply some florals here this is a peony that i already had on hand from maybe a year ago a couple years ago i use them all the time and i love their look so i'm just going to hot glue the leaves first to kind of like make sure they're not covering my love there and then we're going to hot glue the peony there right on top that's it so simple so easy but look how beautiful this looks you can use any florals you have at home and for just a dollar or a dollar 25 depending which dollar tree you're going to i think it's a great deal All right, you want to talk about easy. This is so easy. Now, I know you have seen many lanterns being made before. I have to, but I'm going to bring you just one more inspiration. This one requires absolutely no painting. I am going to remove the back, but I am going to keep the glass. I am also going to remove all the little hooks that you can um, kind of bend over because you don't want to see them through the glass. So I'm going to remove them very easily using my pliers. And this is not real wood you know that the dollar tree um, most of dollar trees frames are kind of like a very hard foam material so or plastic this these is actually a foam but it came out really easy i'm going to add some glue some hot glue very very small amount on all the edges and i'm going to place the glass and it worked like magic it was beautiful i'm going to do the same thing to all four of the frames Now it's time to start applying them together so yeah we're just going to make a box that's it we're not going to even give it a bottom to the box this is just going to be a box it's going to be like a lantern also a display box it could be used for whatever you want but because it already has this beautiful white color i normally would have painted it white it is just perfect to be able to just have on my decor so i'm just hot gluing the third piece here and then the fourth one so easy just hot glue it to the top and then once it's done i'm going to show you how i'm going to style it really quick we're just going to add some box wood faux greenery that i get on amazon i have a lot of the, my favorite greeneries from amazon on my amazon store if you've never checked that out make sure you check that out down below in the description box here we go adding some boxwood right there to the corner some of these full battery operated candles i also have on my amazon store they're beautiful they're battery operated or yeah battery operated and they have a little remote control is really easy to control i thought i would add four of them i did end up removing one but i'm going to show you how beautiful and how easy this was to look at that oh my gosh you don't even need a bottom it's so cool you can always just remove it just straight up things will be there for you to move and add any decor you can always add florals 
for every season. I love it. For this next farmhouse style DIY, I am going to take this Dollar Tree uh, kissing booth sign. It's so cute. I think it's really cute. It's one of my favorites. But again, it's not the style that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to remove the string from it. And I'm also going to sand down all the glitter. It's so much easier to do that with my electric sander. But once again, you can use a uh, sandpaper if you need to. I'm going to now give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Same thing for this one. We're just going to give it one coat on the back two and the i mean one coat in the front there you go two in the back which will then be my front i am going to remove the sticker don't you worry but i want to uh, fill in the little holes with some wood filler first let that dry and then we're going to sand everything down so that it is smooth including the little sticky part from the sticker All right, I want this sign to have a stitched look. I think the kind of like the border that it already has with that cute design calls for this kind of stitched look. So I'm just going to use a permanent marker once again in my, in my square to make sure that I stay on a straight line. And I'm just going to start adding little dotted lines to create that stitched look. It's going to look pretty. I love that technique. You can use that in pretty much any decorations. And you can make these lines as long as you want and it will look cute. This let go and let guide was part of a decal from Dollar Tree. I already had used some of it, but this was left over. I thought it was perfect size for this little corner here on the right bottom side. I think it's perfect. I'm going to use some of this eucalyptus greenery from Walmart. Cut a few little branches, but first we're going to tape some of this leftover buffalo check. You can tell it's leftover. It's all wrinkled. Um, leftover buffalo check ribbon that I had stashed in my ribbon drawer. And we're just going to tape it. And that should be sufficient. Now I'll flip it over. Here we go. We're going to hog loose some of these little branches. And some of them are going to go towards the bottom. And some of them are going to go towards the type facing or the top facing to the right side. And then we are going to add a little peony little bud that I had left over. Same color as the first DIY, but I just thought this was so cute. We're going to add the leaves first and then the bud. And look how stinking cute it is. I love it. That's it. Isn't this easy? Very inexpensive. Things from Dollar Tree, some things from Walmart, and then a flower that I already had on hand. So beautiful. For this next DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree. It's like a little planked triple sign going vertically, and I love it. I'm going to remove the ribbon from it. Just it's so easy to remove. It's just some staples, and then we're going to remove the staples that are left over. I am then going to once again sand everything down to make sure it is smooth. No glitter is on them. I made sure they were nicely dusted and now I'm just going to give everything two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. For this one, I'm actually going to use the front of it. So I'm making sure that I have very good coverage over all these colors, but the chalk paint is really good. So two coats was actually sufficient. I'm going to end up planking this one as well and I'm going to use my square here once again and we're just going to use the um, size of the ruler again that way it's just nice and easy and no brainer and I'm going to continue each plank as if they belong to each other so you see how I just continued it with the next one and I'll do the next the other one as well the same way so easy these lines I'm actually now making horizontal and you can do whatever you want but because it had that design on the sides I thought it was perfect. Now I'm going to sand down the edges once again just to give it a little bit more of a farmhouse look. I'm going to use another one of those Dollar Tree decals. So easy to use. This one says Faith, 
hope and love i'm going to place one on each plank and if there's any excess to the sides i'm just going to cut it using my scissors Now I'm going to take another one of those ribbons from that same little bundle that I got and I'm just going to use that to attach them. I'm going to use some tape. I'm not going to use any staples because the staples that I have are too long and it would just go right through the MBF board. So we're just going to use some tape. By the way, if you are at Dollar Tree and you see this tape, this is the one that it's like a packaging tape and it has the little lines running through it. Wow, is it good. It is durable. It is sticky. I loved it. So I'm going to make sure I grab a few. All right, so that one is already attached. Now we're just gonna hot glue some of those eucalyptus picks from earlier, and I'm gonna just add a couple, one facing to one side and the other. Then I'm gonna make a very simple bow, tied in the center with some white ribbon and just hot glue it in the center to hide that, that joint there in between both picks, and that's it. Another beautiful one, very easy DIY. It goes great with the style that I'm going for today, but remember, you can modify these to whatever colors you want to match your style. For this next DIY, I am going to start with one of these larger canvases from the Dollar Tree. They come two in a pack and they're just really easy to work with. They're large. I love the, the look of them, but I just wanted to give it a little brightness to it. So I'm just going to add one pretty quick light coat of Rust-Oleum Chalk Band in the linen white and then let that dry. Now I'm going to take this wooden plank tart from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the jute string from it and then I'm going to remove each plank. So I want all of these to have a separate uh, just to be separated. So I'm just going to carefully do this. Again, this is not real thick wood. So you want to do this very carefully. If it comes off some of the paint chips in the back, that's okay. It's no big deal. As long as the front looks fine, you are fine. I'm going to take some of this Waverly ink paint. It is beautiful, so pigmented. Only one coat was needed. I'm going to paint the heart, all the heart in the same color. Now I'm going to take some of this burlap ribbon and I'm just going to, again, tape it to the back of it. I'm going to tape it two ice, actually, one on each bottom, and then I'm going to do it again on the top so that it is not kind of tilting on me. So then I'm going to take one more of those Dollar Tree decals. This one I already had to use the bottom portion of it, but I still had the be grateful portion of it. And I thought it would be perfect to add vertically on the right side of the sign. All right, now it's time to attach the heart. This was actually really fun. It was like putting a puzzle together. I'm just gonna hot glue it in place, but I'm gonna dry fit it first and then add quite a bit of glue to the back of it just to make sure it attaches nicely. I'm also making sure that the space between each plank is equal so that way it looks professional and beautiful. I'm going to add some of these greeneries right to the top, one little branch facing each, uh, each side, and just a little bit of hot glue went a long way. And I'm going to take some more of that ribbon, and I'm going to make a very simple bowl, tie it in the center with some jute string, then hot glue it right to the center, and then we're done. Such an easy, simple one. I love, love, love the way this one turned out. I think it's one of my favorites from today. I just love the planked look, and it's just so large. It's larger than the rest, and I just think it looks really professional, very beautiful.
for the next DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree envelope. It's so cute, just as is, but again, it just does not match the style that I'm going for. And I want all of these DIYs to look the same. You can certainly keep it looking this way. You don't even have to do anything. I am going to remove the top from it. And then I'm going to tar start taking some of these foam core from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut about one inch strips. Then I'm going to just kind of line the inside of the envelope. But not too much, right? It's just about an inch to the inside. I'm going to double it up. So I'm going to cut two for each side, two for the bottom. And we're going to hot glue them together. If you are enjoying this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. A thumbs up really helps this video reach more people and it helps my channel grow as well. I also have the ability now on my channel that you can give me a heart thanks. It is a special thanks that you can give me. It helps support my channel. You can find it underneath this video on directly to the right side of the thumbs up. All right, so now I'm just giving the inside of the envelope one coat of the Waverly ink paint and then the outside envelope or the outside of the envelope two coats of rustoleum chalk band and the linen white Now we are going to hot glue the top to the bottom and what we created is a little larger pocket. I did angle the cuts if you're going to show you here in just a quick minute. I did angle the cuts on the top of the envelope because right there you can see it because it has that angled cut. So I just make sure it matched the cut. I'm going to take some more of that ribbon from that little bundle. This one's very thin and I thought I would line the envelope on the front. I thought that would be really cute. So I'm going to line the white portion of it as well as crisscrossing it so it does has that envelope look. Also, don't forget to visit the description box because there's a lot of information there like my Amazon store, my Etsy shop, as well as the link to my, um, oh my gosh, my Instagram page, which I post every day things that I don't normally post here on my channel. So make sure you check that out. All right, so now it's time to add some greenery. These are all leftover greeneries from larger pigs. They all are different, but I thought the green tones will look really cute. So I'm just going to start pushing them right in the envelope. Look how cute this is looking. Now, you can definitely add a decal to the white portion of the envelope. You can also add the greenery to the front bottom of the envelope and hot glue it and leave this as a true little mailbox that you can put in any doorway or anything for little love notes. I think that'd be super cute. But in this case, I'm gonna use it as a little faux planter and I think it turned out so beautiful. It took a complete different look than what it had and I think it looks stunning. For the next DIY, I'm going to take these floating shelves from Dollar Tree. They're really cute and expensive. They come two in a pack with the ones with these size, and it does bring the string and the loops to, to hang them from. But we're just going to use one for this DIY. I am going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pen and the linen white. I'm going to sand down the edges just a little bit just to distress them just a tiny bit as a detail. Now I'm going to drop a little drop of hot glue in each little hole and I'm going to place one of these tiny little black screws that came with, I don't know what it was, but it was in my screws uh, stash. So I'm just going to hot glue it there. I can't screw it because the hole is too big, but it's so little and so light that just by hot gluing it, it works great. I just wanted to have that little detail of the black screws in each corner. Then I'm going to screw in this little clip that I do get on my Amazon store as I do get on Amazon and it is on my Amazon store as well. 
and look how simple this DIY was. A cute little picture frame. It would be perfect as a gift. And look how cute my little handsome boy looks there. For this next DIY, I'm going to take another one of those floating shelves. This is the larger one and it comes with one in it. Same thing, except we're going to paint the shelf black using the Waverly ink paint. And I'm just going to give it one coat on top, on the bottom, and all the edges because this is a shelf. So you will be able to see underneath it. I am going to distress the edges again just a little bit just for a little bit of dimension and character but you don't have to do this you can certainly leave it as is and now it's time to start placing the string now it's pretty long i'm going to cut it into two and because they fray pretty easily i am going to add some painter's tape to each end just so that i have a stronger end so i can thread it through the little holes and this was actually a little harder than what i realized but it didn't take long anyways I'm going to thread them and then knot them on the bottom and the key to this shelf is you want to make sure that both strings are the same length so if there one is longer than the other the shelf is going to be tilted so make sure they're the same length and all you have to do is just untie the knot and tie it again as needed so now that we have all the knots in place it's time to place the ring now the greens i should have placed before i knot them yeah good thing is that the rings are actually uh like open you just have to like open them up a little bit see like separate them so that worked but if these were rings that were like soldered together i would have had to remove some of the knots and thread them again but no big deal look how beautiful this shelf is i can't tell you enough this is actually a pretty good size having a couple or maybe even three of these in a wall will look stunning i love it For the next DIY, I'm going to use another one of these hearts. This is a little bit different one, but it's also from the Dollar Tree. So cute. It is so cute as is, but again, we want to give it a different look. I'm going to remove the red ribbon as well as sand down all the glitter from the top, wipe it down very well, and give everything two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Band in the linen white. I am now going to take this wooden love word from Dollar Tree as well. I was excited when I saw this one. So beautiful. Now I'm going to take some napkins and I'm going to separate it into one ply. I was hoping the napkins were the same like black and white design all around. But it turned out they were just in one little side, one little square. And that's okay. I'm just going to cut off the little square and I'm going to then do this about three times enough to cover the entire love. I'm going to use some Mod Podge and brush it on and apply the one ply napkin. I saw this technique being done recently on Instagram by several people and I thought it was so brilliant. I'd never try this technique and let me tell you, it worked like magic and I'm gonna show you. Once the napkin was supplied, you're going to take a lighter and light it up like the song. <laughs> I, can, I should start singing it, but I'm not because I'm not licensed to use that song. So, okay, here we go. So look at how easy this is. It just keeps going and then it stops right where it needs to stop at the edge of the word. If you need to light it up more, you just do so. It is literally like magic and so satisfying. It did leave a burning smell but no big deal and also if you're going to do this make sure that it is in a safe place and that you have water or something anywhere where you can um like use if you need it so for the inside of the words or the letters you just kind of poke it with your scissors and then light it up again and yeah look how cool that is oh and i don't remember who i saw it from and i'm so sorry but if it was you and you're watching this video and you posted it recently on instagram Put a comment below. I'll make sure to pin it so everyone knows it was you.
Okay, now the heart is dry, we are going to plank it once again. This time I'm going to use my yardstick and they're going to be wider planks. So easy, we're going to do them kind of like at an angle, but vertically. And then we're going to hot glue the love right on top. Look how beautiful this combination looks. This does not look like it came from the Dollar Tree. My friend, look how stunning. I'm going to use another one of those ribbon. This one is just a simple white one. Thread it through. I'm going to knot it. And that's it. Here we go, moving along. This next DIY, I'm gonna use this picture frame that for some reason I thought it was chalkboard. <laughs> it's not, it's just a black poster board. <laughs> so I removed everything from the um, frame, including the back portion of it, but we're gonna leave the little hooks on this one. We are going to take some foam core and we're gonna use the back of the frame that came with it as a guide trace it and then cut it using my exacto knife and then we are going to paint the frame in the waverly ink color all right so now that i have the foam core cut i am going to place it right inside snug it in and then move the clips inwards so that it looks finished do you remember the uh, first uh, or the, oh my gosh, the glass box we made? We removed some of the pictures that it had in, in on the frame. So this is one of them. I thought it was really cute and it matched my style for today. So I'm going to cut it in a wavily kind of like trim and then hot glue it to the center. And then this would be perfect for a kitchen. It's actually a pretty good size frame and I think it looks beautiful. I love it. It can go in any corner in a little countertop and look cute. This is it for today, my friend. I told you these were easy. I told you these were absolutely beautiful, mostly from Dollar Tree items. You can't go wrong. You can customize it to whatever color and style that you like. If you are visiting for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it inspires you to create your own DIY decor. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I'm gonna have a playlist and a video here for you to watch next. Make sure you check out the description box though first because there's a ton of information there for you to watch. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.